Okay. Hi class. Um, this is a second video boost that I'm doing over break. Um, it's a related reaction to nucleophilic aromatic substitution. The last video boost was on nucleophilic aromatic substitution, which is kind of the normal nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Um, remember, it's very contrasted with electrophilic aromatic substitution, which we were studying all week before break. Um, <clears throat> this reaction is kind of a peculiar nucleophilic reaction which is called elimination addition or benzene. It's a very strange reaction because if you take something like chlorobenzene and you add sodium amide, now notice this is a very strong base. These are very harsh conditions, very basic, very nucleophilic. You will get um, aniline. Now this is fantastic because it gives you a way to get a nitrogen onto the ring without all those um, assisting groups. Remember, we learned that nucleophilic substitution on an aromatic ring works best if there are groups that will support the negative charge in the Meisenheimer complex. Okay, this seems to be at odds with that because we're doing a nucleophilic substitution on a ring that does not have these groups. Now, this is a peculiar kind of anomaly, okay? It is not the typical case. So, if we took this same substrate and instead of using this substrate, supposing we labeled it in some way, okay? The actual experiment that was done, it was a very clever experiment, was done with radio labeling, carbon-14. They built a molecule that had a carbon-14 in a particular position to see how the carbon-14 would be oriented in the product. Um, we could also do carbon-13 and do an NMR, okay? Natural abundance, um, in natural abundance, NMR, um, there's only 1%, right? The natural amount of carbon-13 in nature is 1% of all the carbon. And we do do natural abundance carbon-13. So we could do a carbon-13 NMR of this. Carbon-13 is magnetic, carbon-12 is not. But if we doped it up in one position with carbon-13, this would be very obvious in the NMR. And you'd be able to see the different products that you obtained. So say this was a carbon-13 right here. And we did this ex the exact same reaction. We put sodium amid and ammonia, okay? This is what we would obtain. It's very strange. And I'm gonna start drawing our circles for the aromatic ring to save time, but we would obtain this. And you'd say, oh, well, that's, you'd say, whoa, that's really a surprise. We would obtain this, okay? And you'd say, well, okay, all right. I could, maybe I could see where that comes from. But we would also obtain this. Now that should surprise you. And we would obtain this. All right, so what is, you should be good scientists here and thinking about this very cleverly designed experiment. This experiment was designed to say what was going on. What is going on? So what is going on, right, is that substitution is really occurring at all three of the positions, at the position bearing the leaving group and the positions flanking the leaving groups. And this should suggest to you the concept of elimination because elimination involves beta atoms. So they started thinking it might be some kind of elimination followed by an addition. Okay, now let, let, let's look at another very clever experiment. I'm not sure, I don't think this is in your textbook anymore. I think he took it out of this edition. And um, you can, uh, but I want you to still think about this. It's kind of interesting. There are some problems regarding this on your flashcards. So supposing I took the same substrate, okay? I don't have the labeling anymore. And someone else did a very, very clever experiment. What they did is they set the reaction up under the same conditions. Sodium amid, and I'm gonna keep this pretty simple and not do a lot of variations on this. You're basically gonna see sodium hydroxide, or you're gonna see sodium amid. And if you see that, you, you will think about this elimination addition reaction. But what he obtained from this is, oh, oh, sorry. And in addition to this, what was added to the reaction was this because they had some ideas about this all right now you may not know what their ideas are yet but they put this in now what does that suggest to you so they put the normal conditions in and added this other reagent in what reaction do you think about when you see something like that this is something you've been very well trained in the deals alder reaction they were suspicious that there was a deals alder like intermediate in the reaction okay and lo and behold not only did they isolate this compound but much to their excitement, they also isolated this very exciting Diels-Alder-like product. 
Okay, now, if you are good at the diels alder reaction, you can figure out what they thought the intermediate was in the reaction. So this is really like what I'm showing you here is how chemists figure out mechanisms. They do experiments. There's a whole field of chemistry that's called physical organic chemistry, and many of those people try to figure out how the reactions occur. You might wonder, why is it important to know how they occur? If you understand how they occur, you can make predictions, correct? That's one of the reasons we teach you mechanism, okay? Now, let's think about what this came from. So if you were doing your normal retro diels alder so if you did retro diels alder what you would do is you'd say, oh, there's my bridge. This is one, this is two. Remember, the double bond's always between two and three. And I told you, you never get to forget anything in this course. We always use everything. That's five and six. Now, remember, there's a diene and a dienophile. So this would go backwards. This, these are my backwards arrow, retro, okay? This would go backwards to this, all right? That's coming from that part over there. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, that's the bridge but it has to react with something. It has to react with a double bond. And notice, this is still an aromatic ring. The double bond is still there. What does that suggest? That suggests a triple bond. This is wild. This is a wild thing. Now, this is a, a little bit strange, okay? This compound is called benzene. You know, benzene, I don't know. Am I the biggest believer in benzene, per se? No, but I think there's some kind of intermediate like that there's something that can trap a diels alder diene. So, so there's something alkene like about it. So what they feel like is happening, if you put these two pieces of the puzzle together, one piece says the, the, the carbons and hydrogens next door are involved. The other piece says, that's elimination part. The other piece says there's some kind of a triple bond intermediate. Now notice this would be the result of an elimination, okay? elimination addition through the formation of benzene. And I want you to think about why that is so wildly strange. Strange, try to draw an orbital picture of that. That would be a good exercise for you to do, okay? So let's um, finish this up and try to write some kind of mechanism for it. I will hold you responsible for this information. Um, I will probably mention it briefly in class um, or in a problem session next week, but um, I, I am holding you responsible for it. You have to learn some stuff on your own, okay? Um, so, uh, what's going on here? So if I have something like this, again, with some, say, a halide on it, and I add Na, NH2, I'm going to stick to kind of the classics here. What would happen? Well, is there's some kind of elimination happening. So, and this is how the whole thing gets involved, because it could eliminate here, or it could eliminate here. And notice, it doesn't matter where I put these pi bonds. This is really just a benzene ring. I don't have to get all like worked up about where the pi bond is, but I am going to make benzene. So I could make this benzene, and I want you to start integrating this in with that labeling study that I talked about, because this starts to show how the label played into it. If the label was, was here, it could eliminate this way and it could eliminate that way. So then all three carbons get involved. So then what happens somehow, something attacks this, perhaps an NH2, perhaps an NH3. So say I did this. And the way I always explain this to students is that this is so strained, it's like bursting to open. So if this even gets near this and you're heating it or you're under very harsh conditions, this gets close to this, you're going to get a repulsion between this density and this density. And when that happens, it'll open. So it's kind of the reverse of what you're used to. So this is elimination. This is addition. I'm not really sure what adds there. It could, you could write an NH3. I don't like writing an NH3 because it puts a positive charge on it. And the positive charge is a little questionable under these extremely basic conditions. Maybe it forms in some transient way. But I'm very, very adverse to writing um, positive charges under very, very basic conditions. And then this would just protonate. So you could use say, NH3 to protonate this, okay? And then you get your product. But realize this could have happened at any of the three positions, and that's why the labeling study showed this. This is not normal chemistry. This is something that happens under very specific conditions, very strained conditions. Okay, how much time? That's 10 minutes. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat>
What I want you to think a little bit about, and you can try this, and in my next boost I'll work on this a little bit, but what we want to think about is maybe doing some synthesis, synthesis with this. So for example, supposing I wanted to make, I'm not going to get too fancy with this, um, sometimes I get a little carried away. Supposing I wanted to make this, is this doable? I believe so. And I'm going to teach you something about halogens. But um, suppose I wanted to do this, and so I wanted to make this from, um, and this will be another good synthetic problem for us to do. From that, just from that, like how do we introduce a nitrogen onto an aromatic ring? Okay, so that'll be our next video boost. Thanks. See you in class.